Good morning, folks. Beautiful day here in May. And I thought I'd give you a little garden tour, see what we're working with this year. Some of these garden beds will be used for just flowers and herbs, and some will be used for food. Kind of like to mix it up a little. We've got some different zones. This actually used to be where we kept our compost, and now it's got some cannabis plants in it. And we've got one of our garlic patches here. Another garlic patch here. Some of our babies. We use this for sh sifting our compost. When we're making soil. One thing we like to do is scatter poppies everywhere. So pretty soon we'll have blooming poppies. This zone's kind of a mess right now. Disregard that. <laughs> this is some lemon balm and raspberries. We've got two different, we have the golden <clears throat> and then regular up here. This is probably one of my favorite little plant guilds. This is for an apple tree. And we've got, got a lot of stuff growing underneath it. Comfrey, asparagus, garlic, calendula, a couple other things. Can't remember the names of. More cannabis. This zone's really cool. You zoom in on this. Really good pollinator. We're gonna get some more cannabis plants planted in here. walk back and look at this some of these stuff I kind of bypassed so when we first moved here this was just a garden with some fruit trees and we kind of did a number on it and brought in the diversity one of the things we want to do here is have as many colors growing and besides the color I think it's really important to have the different shapes and sizes so we might have you know purple flower like these and this is catmint and then we'll have you know a blue or purple flower like this which is a bachelor button if I can focus and then we scroll over here and see more purple. So we have purples of different shapes and sizes and that will just bring in more more critters. Same thing with the comfrey. See we got two purples next to each other and they're completely different and um, so I think it's really important to have all the colors kind of all the time. And this is a hedge of butterfly bush and I hacked it back really good this year and it's coming back very thick. <laughs> this is where we get our power from. And these beds, these are all on contour. Basically almost all the beds here are on contour. Almost all the beds have an uphill swale. So in the winter time, this swale right here will actually fill with water and then it'll come down 
and escape here and then go right down into the next one. And you can kind of see it there. I did a bunch of weed whacking and I left this zone because there's just so many flowers <clears throat> about to bloom. I'm not going to weed whack flowers. I'll let them go to seed first. And this is another row. This is a row of lavender. And then we have another guild down there. We've got olives. It's kind of like the more of the Mediterranean zone. So this is, if you kind of look, this is south facing. And this is the very dry, kind of nasty soil part of the garden. And so we put our Mediterranean stuff down here because it kind of wants it hotter, drier, less lush soil. And then the further up here you go, actually the soil, it seems like we're sitting on a hard pan of shale. And the further up the hill you go, the soil is way thicker. And then the f down you get here, it gets thinner. And so, you know, you can see here, there's probably an inch or two inches of topsoil before it's hard pan. And then up there, it's much deeper. And one of the things that we do is just have a little bit of everything kind of everywhere. And it's, for me, it's this is more of like a permaculture wild expression instead of like a, you know, straight, straight rows with just one crop in it. We like to mix it up and a little berry guild here, peaches here, fig here. These are goji berries. They look pretty hungry. They probably need some nitrogen, some compost tea. This fig's doing really good. This peach is actually looking nice. Got some nice fruit setting up on it. And these are really cool beds here. These were put in after a rainy, we had some rain on the 4th of July a couple years back, and the ground got really soft. So I came through and put these beds in, and they're same thing on contour. We're walking on the swale right now. And uh, it's really amazing how these swales really work. And so we've got different herbs. we got vervain over here. A lot of the herbs that we planted were herbs for our family, things that we were going to be taking on the regular. Um, so we've got things for pain, things for nerves, things for anxiety. These are honey berries. These are awesome. This is kind of like our first fruit of the year. And they taste like a combination of a honey and blueberry. And they're doing pretty good. This is a cool zone, we call this Tree Henge. And this is all of our plums. And I believe there's, golly, there's one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's nine trees and there's 11 species. And so I didn't put these trees in, I, I would have put them on contour. But what they were doing when they first got this place, the original owners, they put these trees in. They do eight trees in a circle and then a pollinator tree in the middle. And um, so <clears throat> not many of them survived. This place was pretty neglected when we got here. Actually, when we got here, this was just a grassy field with some kind of sad fruit trees. So same thing. These were actually the first beds we put in. We had a group, a bunch of permaculture dudes came here. Actually, they did a, I believe it was a Jeff Lawton workshop. And then they came here straight afterwards. And we put in these beds. It was awesome. It's like they're, what you would dream of as far as getting stuff done. is like a group of guys, group of people. There were some ladies there too. And we just were digging. 
we're swaling, throwing compost on the, on the beds, spreading seeds everywhere. This little section here, so we got uh, an experiment. So this is echinacea that's getting mulched with compost. All right, see how there's no mulch there, it's just compost. It's a compost mulch. And then this, wait a minute. Okay, so it looks like someone raked, raked my experiment. Anyway, I had an experiment going and it looks like it's been disturbed. But anyway, these are little echinacea beds and we plant echinacea every year and we harvest it at least on the third year. And you can see this whorehound in the middle, poppies, echinacea, bachelor buttons, calendula, lots of abundance, lots of diversity. This is, these are pomegranates. These things absolutely rage. And this is a baby one I just planted, I think two years ago. Yeah, every little zone has a little guild. <clears throat> you know, just this one peach tree has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different varieties of plants supporting it. And sometimes we're doing companion planting and sometimes we're not. Sometimes it's just things getting planted as it is. And these plants are still pretty small. It's still early enough in the season. One of the things with cannabis, if anyone out there is interested, there's a few plants that are really good companions for cannabis. And um, the ones that you want to plant are the ones that have multiple benefits. And sometimes you want to have the, the benefit growing right next to the plant. And sometimes you want it slightly away from it. And in my opinion, yarrow is one I'd rather have slightly away from it. You can actually see it was started over here and is encroaching into the walkway. But yarrow increases resin production in plants, so it's a really good one to have near cannabis. And here's another one, comfrey. That's great for cannabis. It's great for everything, really. And so, actually, this whole little spot right here was supposed to be like the mother plants of... We've got thyme, yarrow, and lemon balm. And this is where we would plant the plants um, one time and then we can harvest them from here and take it to other spots. Um, so instead of having really invasive plants everywhere, you can start with them in one spot. And you can see it's taking over into the walkway, which is no big deal for me. Let's go up here. strawberry patch definitely needs to get weeded you can see someone was weeding over here and you can see weeded not weeded uh, some of the best companion planting for strawberries is onion uh, the best strawberries I've ever eaten were grown with onion and vice versa the best onions I've ever eaten were grown with the strawberries Another fig tree. This is Ella Campaign. More comfrey. This is a little cherry tree zone. Some flowers we're waiting for. This cage will end up going over the cannabis plant for support. These plants will get really big. And this is another bed. I love this bed. All these flowers are coming in. They're about to bloom. Pear tree. This is the apricot section. So we've got some really good fruit coming in so far and actually this is the first year I've seen this tree fruit like this this is amazing and uh, we have aprium 
a couple cool fruits. I don't really actually remember specifically, but there's apricots, there's apriums, and there's some other stuff. On the... And these are the these are the cool poppies. I'll do a video on just the poppies here coming up. Cardboard, all of that will get composted. So yeah, that's what's going on here. Beautiful day. It's supposed to be 93 today. It's very early in the season to be in the 90s. But uh, it is what it is. This thing's going off. Okay, guys. Hope everyone enjoys their day. Wherever you are. And I hope you're in the garden doing what you love the most. I know I will be. Actually, I'm taking the ATV in to get repaired. But besides going to town for the ATV, we'll be working in the garden. So you guys have a good one.